sometimes when you hear things about you, sort of, you know, it's very humbling. To be standing up here in front of all these people is really humbling. Uh, I've been a dreamer all my life. I never dreamed about making the Philadelphia PGA, to be honest with you, the Hall of Fame. Uh, I want to thank Pete Trenum. I want to thank he was the main guy pushing this through. I'm honored to be going in with George McNamara, a good friend of mine, a very good friend of mine. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll have a story. Uh, I just talked to Bob Fister in the back room, and I said, geez, I think i got to make a speech, Bob. He said, hey, make it like your swing, short and sweet. So <laughs> that's what we're going to try to do. <laughs> but anyway, I came out of the Army in 1969, went out to Edgemont to play a free round of golf with a friend of mine, Bill Payne, who I still play in the Lancaster Pro-Am with. And on about the fourth hole was a ladies' day. Here comes this big guy in a cart, one of them Harleys with that circle handlebar driving up. And my buddy's name was Slasher. And he says, hey Slash, don't play through any women today. It's ladies' day. That was my introduction to Big Al. So <laughs> he thought I was going to be friends with him when he's giving me orders like that. <laughs> Didn't happen until later on in life. But Big Al was always my alter ego. If I ever needed anything, whether it was a big confidence boost, Al was always there for me. If I needed to work on something, we'd go down the end of the range. I owe the Philadelphia PGA pros, every one of these, and there's a lot of new guys out here, which I don't know. Sort of embarrassed about that, but when I started, if I asked any pro, any PGA pro, for any help, they were more than willing to help. I mean, I learned stuff from Dick Smith to be so competitive and so focused. Jack Conley, for being a grinder, he would he would be in on every shot. Uh, Timothy Boffer, who used to play out at Edgemont, and I'll never forget this: the the four holes at Edgemont on the back nine are just you know 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, and 16. They just go back and forth, but they're long holes. Timmy would hit the ball and start running, and I'm saying, what the hell is this? You know? He says, oh, he says you got to be in shape to play the tour. I told him, Tim, I says. I play golf because I don't have to run after I hit the ball. So, but that, we just had different ideas. And uh, I, I tell people, Edgemont gave me a career. There's a gentleman in this section who works out at, uh, I get to confuse, it's Applebrook, or the, tell me down how it's at. Apple, Apple Cross. His name is Mike Reynolds. He gave me my tour career. I worked for Mike in the Virgin Islands and uh, saw me hit balls and he came down on the range and he worked with me and he's the one I only ever worked with on my golf swing. So a uh, big thank you to Mike, he's not here. And I'll tell you a story, one story and we're done here. I came out of the Army, I had a $6 an hour job at the post office. Had 90 days to reclaim it. Went out to Edgemont and I got tiny, needed somebody to pick up the range. Dollar fifty an hour, so I, I did it for you know three months until November, and then went back to the post office, and he calls and he said he's coming out again in April, and my mother and sister were dead against it, you know, because I was going to quit a you know government job in the post office to go work dollar fifty, and I asked my father, and he looked at me and he says, you know, the way I figure you could always serve mail, so. That's why I took a dollar fifty an hour job. And it worked out great and I'm very lucky about it. And I'll tell you one tour story. And first of all, I want to thank my wife also. You know, I mean, I didn't start playing good until I got married to her. She was my uh, childhood sweetheart. She just never knew it. I was quiet. <laughs> but um, this is the story about my father my mother and my brother, and no longer are they there. And they're, you know, if I get through this, it'll be good. But two years ago, my brother passed away, and it was the year that McElroy won the U.S. Open down at the Congressional, and it triggered a story. I came home from tour, I don't know what year it was, it was like 77 or 78 or 79, my brother was in college. And I would send an envelope home once a week to my father keeping expenses. Well, my mother is involved in that, and she sees what I'm paying my caddies. And my brother was 12 years younger than I am, 
So I didn't play in the Muirfield tournament. I come home from the Texas swing, and I'm eating dinner at the house. You know, it's a home-cooked meal, which is a bonus, because I was living off McDonald's and everything. And uh, she looks at me, she says, I decided your brothers are in caddy for you this summer. <laughs> I go, what? She says, you heard me, Sean's not caddy for you this summer. I said, Mom, Sean's never been on a golf course. I said, this is like the major leagues. I said, you can't caddy. I said, Dad, you gotta talk to Mom and my dad. So you fight your own fights. <laughs> so anyway, we're there. We go down to Congressional, and I'm playing in the Pro-Am, Wednesday Pro-Am, on the eighth hole, the only birdie hole on Congressional at the time, a little short hole. I hit it up there. Damn, my brother doesn't pick up the hole, cost me two, pick up the ball, cost me two shots. So there's no money in the pro-am, so I can handle that. So I call him over and I said, Sean, look, just between me and you, you know, I don't want to argue, you know, embarrass him. I said, don't you ever pick up a ball unless you see me throw it and it hits you. I said, you can be a dog and point at it. I don't care how you do it. Take a club, finger, anything, but don't pick up a ball. So we learned that. So anyway. Sunday we're playing pretty good, and pretty good. I'm playing with Dave Stockton and Miller Barber, and the 18th hole is down that little hill surrounded by that water and everything. And I hit it maybe about 20 foot, and they had the old scoreboards, you know, where your name's on there. And uh, Al didn't tell you, Al was my sponsor on the tour. I had won $2,000 in the 1974 Club Pro down at uh, Pinehurst. And Al says, well, you, you can go out on tour. You know, I was working in the Virgin Islands. I was going to quit in March, join the tour. And I said, Al, I got $1,600 now. He said, good. He said, I got another 2000 And he was my sponsor. I never needed his $2,000. And thank God, because Atlantic City opened that year, too. You know, so <laughs> if anybody knows Al, you know where that $2,000 was. But anyway, going down the 18th hole, I hit it maybe about 20 foot. Miller Barber putts up. Two putts it, you know, Stockton putts up, two putts it. Now it's my brother and I. Whoever putts last on the tour, the caddy has the pin, you know? And I look at the scoreboard, and I'm like in eighth or ninth place, and I figure if I make this, I'm going to jump up in the top five, which might have been $15,000, you know, which was a lot of money back then. It's not quite where it is these days. So I hit it a little bit too hard, and it doesn't break a good past the high side, about three foot, and I mark the ball, and then I come back, and then I decelerate, and the ball breaks, and I miss it. So I go from, you know, eighth to possibly fifth to about maybe fifteenth. I tap it in, and the pin comes in and almost takes my hand off, you know. And my brother grabs the bag, and he's running up the hill. And you all know you have so much time to sign your scorecards, you know. I got a maybe fifteen, twenty foot walking up the hill, and I take out the scorecard, and I'm checking. I'm walking up, and I hear. And I look over, and it's my mother. That's how she calls us. She's like this, waving to me. I go, so I go, I said, what's up, Mom? And I go to a crowd, you know, to the roast. And she says, your brother just told me that putt you missed cost him $750. <laughs> She said, you heard me, Sean just told me that putt you missed cost him $750. I said, Mom, if it cost him $750, what the hell do you think it cost me? She said, I don't know. I said, it cost me 95% more than that. It cost me about $15,000. So I don't really give a damn about that kid right now. And I start walking up the, the hill, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm walking as fast as Sean to get him. And she leaned out over the road. And these people don't know who the doctors are at all. And she goes, Eddie, Eddie. And I turn around and look. She says, I still think you ought to pay the kid. <laughs> so, you know who the favorite was of that family? Thank you very much. Believe me, I already think you're